verse uh, 16 and 17. chapter 1 verse 16 and 17 if you have it would you say amen? amen it says and Jesus walked beside the sea of Galilee and I'm reading in the New International Version and Jesus walked beside the sea of Galilee he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake for they were fishermen somebody say fishermen, fishermen. verse 17 he says come follow me Jesus and I will send you out to fish for people. I will send you out to fish for people. Let me just read that in the New King James Version. It says, as he, Jesus, walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Then Jesus said to them, follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. I will make you become fishers of men. The word of God for the people of God, you may take your seats. So Father, just asking you by way of the Holy Spirit to breathe on us in this moment, remove every distraction, empower my lips of clay, that they will become vessels for you to speak your word. I decrease that thou mayest increase. Use me for your glory. Anoint the ears, hearts of your people that they may receive this word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, the making of a kingdom influencer. The making of a kingdom influencer. And I'm going to cut across the field this morning uh, because I do want to give you opportunity to uh, support Bishop at 2.30. And that will require that we're timely in all of these services. <clears throat> but I want to begin by sharing with you that when we came into 2024, uh, we declared to you the theme for this year. And actually, it'll be the theme for the next couple of years. Uh, and it was, and it is, becoming a kingdom influencer. Can you say that? Becoming a kingdom influencer. We told you, uh, I made a video and then Bishop preached, but we told you that word influencer is a title that has uh, come into our awareness through the social media culture. Uh, influencer, say influencer are people who recruit followers to embrace a particular brand. I don't know if you're on social media, but most of us are, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all of those, uh, YouTube. Uh, but, but there are people who are now employed or self-employed as influencers, or they're employed by a particular company uh, to recruit followers to their brand. Uh, it could be a brand of clothing, a, a, a fashion brand. It could be a food brand. It could be cars. It could be any number of things, technology. But there is someone uh, that's out there that's called a brand influencer recruiting you to buy that product of that brand. Uh, these influencers uh, use their platforms on social media, as I told you, or whatever platform they have to endorse and promote a particular brand by telling you uh, that they use it and that it's a good brand for you. Uh, becoming a brand influencer has become so popular, y'all, that there are classes now that you can take. Uh, yes, on YouTube for free, but other, in other mediums that people pay for just to learn how to become an influencer. Uh, becoming a brand influencer is profitable. 
It's not just popular because companies have discovered that using a social media influencer can boost their brand awareness and drive up the number of customers to their product. You've seen on, 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 on television now that it is not no longer just even uh, uh, no-name people making commercials now. It's, it's people like Shaq and people like Steph Curry and all kinds of celebrities now who have become uh, uh, brand influencers in these commercials because companies understand that folk will change from one brand to another brand based on the influencer's popularity and credibility. Uh, we told you that, 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 that in looking at this idea of, of, of influencers and looking at what is happening in our culture, we told you that we've got to embrace the fact that we have a brand. Somebody said we got a brand. And it's called the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. it, it, it's, it's, it's our brand. It, it's what we wear, who we are, what we embrace. And, and, and it's our mandate. Can you say mandate? Jesus gives the mandate uh, for us to become kingdom influencers. He, he told the disciples and he's telling us in Matthew 28, 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Go and make followers of my brand. Are y'all talking to me? <clears throat> I love what the Amplified Bible says, how it says, he says, it says, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. It, it, it says in parentheses, help the people to learn of me, believe in me and obey me. I, I don't know if y'all getting that, but Jesus was saying in a nutshell, recruit people to the brand of the kingdom. Uh -huh. you, you, I'm sending you out. As influencers, I'm sending you out as representatives. We used to say back in the 80s and 90s as ambassadors for my brand, for my kingdom. And so I just want to delve just a little bit into this text today because I believe that it speaks to us as it relates to us becoming kingdom influencers. Uh, I, I shared with you, <clears throat> excuse me, in, in our text today, that Jesus is, is uh, walking by the Sea of Galilee and uh, there is Simon and Andrew, his brother there, and, and they are just having an ordinary work day. You see, by occupation, Simon and Andrew are fishermen. And they're, they're, they're there casting their net uh, to fish fish, and Jesus walks by them, and he, this is what he says. He says, Follow me, and I will make you become fishers of men. Now, what I want you to understand about this is that the goal of Jesus was to recruit them so he could turn the ministry over to them. You got to remember that Jesus came to earth, right, to preach the kingdom of God, but that was not his only assignment. His ultimate assignment was to, to die for the sins of the world. And, 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 and he was going to have to turn this ministry, this earthly ministry of kingdom influencing over to somebody else. And so he's looking for recruits to become brand ambassadors. And at this point in the text, John the Baptist, who had been the most popular brand influencer up until now, he's in prison. And ultimately, John the Baptist will not come out, but he will, he will die. He will be killed because of the fact that he's carrying the brand. But, but, but Jesus is still not going to leave this ministry of kingdom influencing unattended. So he comes to, by way of these two men, by way of the Sea of, sea of Galilee, and, and, and he approaches these men and say, follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. I, I got three more years. The ministry of Jesus, his adult ministry only lasted about three years. He said, I, 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 he knew within himself, I only have a little time left to, to, to preach the kingdom, so I got to find somebody else. And he comes by these men, Simon and Andrew, and he says, 
follow me and I'll make you fishers of men. And, and it's, it's an interesting thing because Jesus presents these men an opportunity to, to be made fishers of men in the midst of them being fishers of fish. Don't, don't run by that too fast. He, he says, I know you are catching fish, but I want you to become a catcher, a fisher of men. Uh, I, I want to take you guys to another level in your fishing. I, I want to make you a fishers of men. You, you got to understand, fishing was their secular occupation. So he uses this as a metaphor to the, expand their thinking about what he was calling them to. Help me, God. He, he, he was calling them to become kingdom influences. He, would call, he was calling them to become brand ambassadors. So he, what he did was he married what they did in their secular life to what he wanted them to do spiritually. Am I talking to anybody up in here? And can I tell you this morning that God wants us to marry, connect what we do in our secular lives, in our everyday life to what he's called us to do spiritually. I don't hear nobody saying anything. God doesn't want you to relegate your spirituality to one category of your life. God doesn't want you to leave your spirituality, your kingdom uh, uh, representation here in the building. But he wants you to carry it out in your everyday living. Fellas, y'all are fishing fish, and that's wonderful. But I want you to fish for me. I want you to connect what, I, what you're able and skilled to do out here at this sea to what you do in the world for me. Am I talking to anybody up in here? Uh, uh, when, 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 when you look at these, uh, these social media influencers, what you'll find about social media influencers is that they use their everyday life. Uh, if if, if uh, y'all follow some folk on Instagram and you see that, that, that they just video everything, they video themselves in the bathroom, they, they video self, themselves uh, cooking. They video themselves going to and fro work and all those places, but they're always leading you to a brand. They're always look, using their everyday life to, to promote something that they want you to buy into. Come here a little closer to me. That, that's how God wants you to connect your everyday life to your spirituality. He wants you to leverage what you do in your everyday life. That's, that's your platform. Somebody say, I got a platform. Uh -huh. you, you got a platform. The people you work with, yeah, they're your platform. And the people you come home to, married to, birth, well, whoever, that, that are, they are your platform. And God wants you to connect your, your everyday living and use that to influence people for the kingdom of God. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. Because what you got to understand is you carry the kingdom of God. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is within you. Which means that when you get up in the morning and you go to FedEx, you are carrying the kingdom of God. When you walk in, in the classroom as a teacher, when you, when you go into the boardroom of whatever corporation you are working for, you are carrying the kingdom. And Jesus is saying, I need you to marry the two. Don't, don't, don't walk into your place of employment and don't tell them about the kingdom. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. Uh -huh. I don't know what your occupation is. Maybe you're a hairstylist. Maybe you're a makeup artist. Maybe you're a barber. But, but Jesus is saying every time somebody sits in your chair, Why you making them up on the outside? I need you to make them and tell them I can make them up on the inside. Why you giving them lashes and you're making the nose smaller? Come on. I, I need you to tell them about the kingdom and what the kingdom can do for the inside of them. I'm telling you why you're lying in their hair and why you're shaving their beard. I need you to talk to them in your chair about the kingdom. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. 
And so we need to marry the two worlds, not just in your occupation, but even in your home. Whoever you're married to, whoever's living with you, your children, whoever the, whatever the situation is, and not just in your home. Because we're pretty good about talking to people in the house. But them friends you got. Why y'all outside? Why y'all brunching? Jesus says brunch and tell them about the kingdom. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. Uh -huh. Why y'all sitting up in love? Find a way. Between the bump and the grind. To tell somebody about the kingdom of God. Uh -huh. I mean, you know, we might as well keep it real up in here. Uh, it, look, I ain't trying to embarrass you. You put it on social media anyway. Uh, when, we, when, when we talk about Joseph, because we love to tell the story of Joseph and how God promoted him and took him from the prison to the palace. I want you to understand that, that it was God not promoting Joseph for Joseph's um, because of his ambition or his own elevation. But it was because God wanted to take his influence into Egypt. He wanted to take his influence into the palace because Pharaoh was the king, but he didn't know the king of kings. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. And so even as we talk about this, and, and most often we talk about God promoting us and elevating us and, and, and praying and believing, decreeing and declaring what we want God to do in our lives, you need to know that every new place that God puts you in, every new boardroom, every new office, every new neighborhood, I'm trying to help y'all, every place of elevation is so you can Influence where you are for the kingdom of God. Uh huh. Oh. But when we start talking about this idea of being kingdom influences, it can be overwhelming because because it tri it triggers our inner critic. Uh, we struggle feeling like we don't know enough. We haven't been. Am I talking to anybody? We don't feel like we've been a Christian long enough or we know the Bible cover to cover. We, 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 don't, we don't feel adequate to influence others for the kingdom, which is why we think the calling to become kingdom influencers is for preachers and pastors Be because we feel that they are the only ones equipped to handle carrying the message of the kingdom of God. But what I want to remind you about in this simple text, these two verses here, is that Simon and Andrew were just ordinary men. Look at somebody and tell them they were just ordinary folk like you and me. But hear what Jesus says. He says to them, follow me and I will make you become fishers of men. He, he said, Miss Westbrook, I'm going to make you. Uh huh. Which, which means then that whatever they were going to become as influencers, they were not being expected to do it on their own. The, the potential for what they would do and who they would become would not rest on their shoulders only. He said he would make them. And, and I don't know who needs to hear this this morning, but, but that, that's a word to encourage you to stop putting a ceiling on what can, God can do with your life and, and who you can become uh, uh, be, because God says, I'm going to make you. I'm not expecting you to already be what I'm calling you to do. He said, you, you, you don't have to put a limit on your life because, because the power of what you become and what you do doesn't rest on you. It rests on me. 
And, and God and, and the Lord proves that by taking 12 men. Simon and Andrew are just two, the first two of the 12 that he will call. But God proves that, that, that he can take ordinary folk like me and you and, and do something great and awesome with them. And that ought to be good news for somebody. So, somebody who thinks that, that they, are, they have limited ability. Somebody who has disqualified themselves because they don't have what somebody else has. You ought to be happy. You ought to be excited this morning that God said you don't have to do it by yourself. Uh huh. Because the truth is, listen, listen, no matter how educated we are, how skilled we are, we don't have what it takes to make ourselves anything in the kingdom. Oh, I know we brag about being self-made. I know we, 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 we brag about being self-taught, but ain't none of us self-nothing. The old folk used to say, what I know God taught me. Where I am, God brought me. God took some, 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 some uneducated folk. People who lived in rural America. People who were out in cotton fields. Y'all know we're getting ready to go to Black History Month. God, God took just some ordinary down-home folk and did powerful things with them. He said, I'll make you. Now, this making process was a necessary, essential process. Because, because listen to this, not only were they ordinary men, but they were imperfect men. Oh, y'all saying nothing. Uh, they, they, they weren't just ordinary, Pastor Joe. They were imperfect men. Uh -huh. si Simon, Simon, somebody say Simon. You're going to know him later as Peter, but, but Simon was cocky and hot-headed. That was on one end of the spectrum. And on the other end of the spectrum, he would act cowardly and hide out. Y'all remember the two extremes. He was arrogant and cocky. Si Simon would cuss you and cut you. It's in the Bible. Somebody rose up on Jesus and Simon took his sword out and cut off their ear. Jesus had to sew it back on. <laughs> right? And, and, I, and I got some of y'all up in here. <laughs> that we have to continuously pray. Because you out here cussing and cutting. And saying, I'm a member of New Life and my spiritual leaders are Bishop Kevin and Pastor Linda Willis. And I'll be saying, help Lord Jesus, help Lord. And I, I ain't just talking about you because I'll be talking about me too. Because I've shown up off there too a couple of times. No, I tried, but I took it down, I took it down. But on the other end of the spectrum, he, he was cowardly and, and he was hiding out. Y'all remember when Jesus was, was uh, being arrested and, 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 and people were, there was a little girl saying that, hey, he wanted her, he, his disciples, he wanted his followers. Si Simon got, got cowardly. And even though he had told Jesus he would not deny him, the Bible says Jesus had already told him before the cock crows three times, you going to deny me. And Simon went and Head out, and and I and I want you to understand that it's in this making process that that God, uh, the Lord, uh, brings to bear in our lives because He knows that we're not just ordinary, but we are imperfect. But He says, "I will make you." Uh, so so in this making process, uh, uh, it's often what we check out in this idea of becoming influencers because we love to talk about possibilities and promotion, but we check out on the making process. 
uh, and, and I know we, we've preached so many sermons about it. We ought to be able to embrace by now that everything, every promise, every possibility with God comes with a process. Somebody say it's a process. And these 12 men went through a process. They went through many challenges and they found themselves in storms. I preached a couple of months ago about them being out there in the sea in a storm. They dealt with people not liking them and criticizing their actions. But, but, but all of this was the making process. These experiences, these challenges that they had was part of the process that God was using, that, the, that Jesus was using to, to shape their lives, to smooth out the rough places. And, and that's what he does even now in your own life when you're trying to figure out why am I going through this? Why am I being so challenged by this person on my job? Why am I dealing with this supervisor that, that's so hateful? Why, why have I got this going on in my marriage? And why am I struggling here? It's a part of the making process. Uh, but here's, here's the rub to the making process. I'm cutting up across the field. Here's the rub to the process. Uh, uh. God doesn't wait till you are made to use you. Uh -huh, because the making process is a lifetime experience. It's a lifetime process. All right? So, so God uses you even while he's making you, while he's smoothing out your bad attitude, while he's dealing with your dysfunction he still is wanting to use you and it's in real time I, I tell my children sometimes when we go into conversations about you know them growing up and they want to you know throw some stuff up in my face of how what I did unfair they still claim that there was some whippings that they got that they didn't deserve and all that kind of stuff and you know how y'all you know how the kids do it. And, 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 and here's what I tell them. I tell them that, that, that whatever happened, you got to understand that it was happening in real time. I was parenting and doing life. I was parenting and still growing into a woman that the, who I am now. You understand what I'm saying? And so you got to understand that the making process of, of you becoming a kingdom influencer, it happens in real time. It happens even while you're going through divorce. Come on, God, God still wants to use you even while you're sitting because you've been terminated from your job. God, God still wants to use you even though you're going to the doctor and you're getting bad diagnosis. Look at somebody and tell them it happens in real time. Uh, this making, somebody say making. Uh, uh, it's, it's the idea that we saw in, in Jeremiah 18. Jeremiah 18 where, where God instructs Jeremiah to go down to the potter's house to show him what he was doing in the lives of the nation of Israel. And so Jeremiah says, I went down, Angela, uh, to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel. He says in verse 4, but the vessel, the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it in another pot and shaping it as he seemed, as it seemed best to him. And this is what, what God says through the prophet Jeremiah. Can I not do with you, O Israel, as this potter does with the clay? Like clay in the potter's hand, so are you in my hand. Can I tell you that that's what the making process looks like? It looks like you are marred clay. And God has you on the potter's wheel. And the potter's wheel ain't comfortable, Q. And not only is the potter's wheel not comfortable, God has his hands around the bow. Look at somebody and tell them, sometimes I feel like God has me in a chokehold. And all of this is happening to you because God is trying to smooth out some rough places. God is trying to get out those disfigured places and those blemishes that are in you. And, and when, 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 when one level of strength doesn't work, he starts speeding up the process and squeezing his hands harder. Come on up in here. Am I talking to anybody? 
But, but this is where I shout. I shout about the fact that God didn't leave the marred clay, the marred vessel on the shelf. I wish y'all could hear me. I shout about the fact that he didn't reject me as a vessel. He didn't deny using me just because I had some imperfections, just because I had some shortcomings. Am I talking to anybody up in here that everybody else would have passed you over? But God shows you in spite of your bad mouth, in spite of your bad attitude, in spite of how many times you've been through divorce. God shows you. Even though you came from the wrong side of the tracks, even though you've got made bad decisions, he didn't leave you on the shelf. But every day, as he works on you, he still uses you. I wish I could talk to somebody up in here. Every day, even though he's still working and fine tuning you in some places, he still sends you into other places where he can use you for your, his glory. Look at somebody and tell them, don't try to disqualify me because God is still using me. I know I got some things that need to be worked out. I, I know I don't always get it right, but thank God that God still chooses to use me. Hallelujah in this house. I can shout right here. Hallelujah. Because see, we glamorize the pulpit. Uh -huh. we, we look at folk who are standing behind the sacred desk and we think that they have it all together. And I know that because your feelings get so hurt when you find out that we don't. But thank God that I can still robe up Even though I don't always get it right. <laughs> Thank God that he understands. And not only does he understand, but he's still working on the person that's under this robe. I wish I had somebody. And tell, 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 tell somebody else, don't let what I look like fool you. Because I'm made up for church, but I'm really a mess up under here. I'm singing, but I ain't really singing. And why we don't like the making process, because it can be difficult and it can be painful. Because it's in the process where our hearts get broken and, and it's in the process where God allows our egos to be def deflated. Uh, it's in the process where God doesn't allow us to be celebrated because he wants us just to serve. It's in the making that we become kingdom influencers. Look at somebody and tell them it's in the making. Uh -huh. It's in the making that God prepares you and makes you a kingdom influencer. Because see, listen, listen, you don't have no influence without some experience. What gives weight to your influence is that you can say, he did it for me. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. What, what gives you weight is when you can say, I've been through the fire. And I came out and I don't smell like smoke. You, your, your influence goes to another level. Look at somebody and tell them, I got a lot of influence. Because I've had a lot of experience. Uh, let me cut across this field. Uh, it's in the making. Peter, Simon in this text, is really the narrator of this book, Mark. Mark, the, the name of the book is Mark, but Mark is only telling the story that Simon, who's later going to become Peter, is telling him. Because Simon Peter becomes the, the spiritual mentor of Mark. I can't go there. I can't tell y'all all about that story, but it's in the Bible. Uh, Peter would become the chief apostle. Uh, he, he, he would become over the 12. Do you hear what I'm saying? And he couldn't have become that without the Lord making him who he could become. 
He couldn't have made the leap cue from an ordinary fisherman to become a chief apostle of the church of Jesus Christ without the Lord making him. That's why he says in Peter, 1 Peter 5 and 6, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that his own book that he wrote, he said that God may exalt you in due time. Peter said if you just stay on the wheel, if you just keep letting the Lord work on you, if you would humble yourself, God will exalt you. God will elevate, I don't hear y'all saying nothing, in due time. It, th this same ordinary, imperfect man preached one sermon and over 3,000 people got saved. The Bible says in the book of Acts, in chapter 5, that, that all 12 of them performed many signs and wonders. And Peter, listen to this, Simon, ordinary and imperfect, when he walked through the streets, people would get healed just by his shadow it was so awesome that they were starting to bring people from everywhere and just lay them out on the dirt roads and as Peter walked by didn't even have to put his hands on them they got hit I'm talking about that kind of power that kind of elevation but it only happens when you allow the Lord to make you and I don't know who, who I'm talking to this morning, but, but, but I hear the Holy Ghost saying that if you desire to be elevated, if you desire to be promoted, what your prayer needs to be is that God would help you to withstand the making. God, help me to not quit while you're making me. Help me not to give up while you're making me. Oh. Uh. Simon, Jesus says, Simon, Andrew, and Andrew, follow me, and uh, uh, I'm going to make you fishers of men. But the follow me is an invitation. Somebody says it's an invitation. What you need to know about the text is that they had already met Jesus before. This was not their first encounter with Jesus. They met Jesus before, and it was Andrew who met Jesus and went home and told Simon, come see the Messiah. We found him. All right, and they've, they've, walked, they've seen Jesus perform miracles, but this time, somebody said this time, Jesus is now giving them the invitation to follow him. He's calling them, Ms. Westbrook, to a full commitment, somebody say commitment, to discipleship. The, the, the offer, y'all, I got to understand this, the offer was not to take a series of classes and get a certificate and go back home. But the offer, the invitation was for them to fully commit their lives, to invest their lives in becoming brand influencers. And let me just say parenthetically that there is no invest advancement without investment. Uh, but I got to break this down and let you go. The actual rendering of the follow me, somebody say follow me, is come after me. That after me, come after me, is Jesus saying, attach yourself to me. Listen, if they were going to become fishers of men to catch other people, they had to first be caught themselves. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. If we're going to be kingdom influencers, we got to be caught. We got to embrace the brand ourselves. How you going to sell me gain and you buy time? How, how are you going to influence, influence me to buy dove and you use ivory? He says, attach yourself to me. The, unfortunately, the church culture that we live in today, we're not following. We're not coming after Jesus. We want to attend church. We want to get our praise on. We want to be blessed, but we don't want to attach ourselves. Uh -huh. we, we, we like the church members. But the truth of the matter is, I feel y'all dropping me, is Jesus is saying, I don't want you to be just a church member. I don't want your name just to be on the roll. I, I don't want this to be somewhere where you can have a funeral when your loved one dies. I'm calling you to commitment to discipleship. Attach yourself to me. And I wish I had time, but I don't have time to talk about the folk that's got attachment issues. Uh-huh, you don't only have a problem with attaching to church. You have problems attaching to any relationship. But I ain't got time for that. 
And this is how you know how you, that you're following him. You know that you're following him if he's leading you. Because uh, come after me doesn't follow me doesn't just mean uh, 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 attach yourself, but it means accept my authority. Uh huh. When you when you attach, when you follow Christ, it means He becomes Lord of your life. Your life is not your own. He says, if anyone wishes to come after me, to follow me, he must first deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. That word deny means to forget or lose sight of yourself and your own interests. But if your life is your own, if you do what you want to do, when you want to do it, how you want to do it, with whom you want to do it, you are not following him because he's not leading you. Uh huh. This is how you know. Somebody say, how you know that you're following him? How you know that you're coming after him? It's not only when you attach yourself. It's not only when you allow him to be authority over your life. But it's also when you start imitating who he is. Uh huh. That, that's what come after me means. It means look like I look, talk like I talk, give like I give. I don't hear y'all saying nothing. Uh huh, and, and, and some of us are, 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 are saying we're followers, but we look like we're following somebody else. I don't know if you grew up like I grew up, but my mama said when you step out this door, you need to look like a Wallace. Uh huh, you don't look like the folk down the street. I don't care what they're wearing, I don't care what they're doing, what they're saying. You walk out this door and you represent me. Oh, he ain't saying nothing. Uh huh. And I hear you. I hear you. I hear your resistance. You saying up there, back out there, Dr. Linda, don't don't judge me. And I, I ain't judging you. I'm just inspecting your fruit. Uh huh. Cause the Bible says a tree is known by the fruit it bears. Uh huh. You can't be an apple tree and pears are showing up on your tree. Who am I talking to up in here? Uh huh. Throw that out on social media. And here's what you got to know. You're always influencing. Whether you're influencing for the kingdom of light, of heaven, of God, or you're influencing for the kingdom of darkness. Because you can only live in two kingdoms. Uh huh. There is no great place. You're either over here in the kingdom with God and influencing people for righteousness and holiness. Y'all ain't talking to me now. Are you over here in the kingdom of darkness influencing folk for the devil? But all of this, what God will do in your life, is contingent upon your level of commitment. And God, Jesus is saying you got to put all ten toes down. I'm just trying to bring it out there so y'all can hear. And let me say parenthetically, longevity in the church does not make you a follower. I, w- I wanted to leave, but I can't tell you, leave till I tell you that. Uh uh-huh. longevity in church does not make you a follower no more than sitting in the cockpit of an airplane makes you an airplane pilot. You can sit there for 8, 12, 24 hours that don't make you a pilot. So it doesn't matter how long you've been in the church. The question is, are you following him? Are you committed to him? Look at somebody tell them we're getting ready to get out of here. Follow me means to come after me but lastly it means to come now somebody say come now Uh uh-huh it it, it is a present imperative uh, uh, word that's the part of speech that it is in the Greek it means to come with urgency here's what I want you to know as I take my seat every invitation to the kingdom uh, into discipleship to become brand influencer is an opportunity has that has an appointed time An appointed time, which means that there is a time when the time is up. And some of us have missed our opportunities in some things that God wanted to do with us because we let time get away from us. Look at somebody and tell them, I could have, I should have, I would have, had I respected time. Had I understood that when God told me to do something, there was a time stamp on it. 
Uh, someone said hell is the knowledge of opportunity lost. The place where who I am comes, to, comes face to face with who I might have been. So the Bible says immediately they left their nets and followed him. Immediately they dropped what they needed to drop. Put away what they needed to put away. And followed him. It was a sense of urgency. Look at somebody and tell them, today is the day. The time is now. To drop whatever is distracting you. To drop whatever is getting in your way. To drop whatever else you made a priority. And follow him. Where are we going, Jesus? It does not yet appear what you shall be. What you going to do with my life, Jesus? Eyes haven't seen. Ears haven't heard. 